Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm Siddharth Gulati, a sports media professional, and I'll be conducting a short and crisp and a fun interview with a popular figure in women's cricket, the captain of Brazil national team, Roberta Morati Apri. Hi, Roberta. It's good to have you. Hi. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be. Yeah, it is indeed a pleasure to talk to you. So uh, before we begin the interview, let me tell my viewers that Roberta's Instagram page is simply superb. It's kind of a fitness journey and you wouldn't really want to miss it. So uh, Roberta, what, uh, you know, what was the inspiration behind, you know, uploading all those fitness related videos? Uh, I think I actually started doing it without much thought behind it. I just thought it was good to show what I was doing for my friends and things like that. But then I realized that what happened was different. I wasn't just showing my friends what I was doing, but I was actually showing girls uh, and women that they can be fitter, that they can be stronger. Um, because I was always involved with cricket and before that I was involved with golf, it actually started this trending of, okay, I can be a little bit stronger and uh, maybe be better. Um, I, I don't have to be this fragile person. I can actually go over there and lift some weights. And because there's always this assumption that if you start lifting weights, you're going to be too strong. You're going to look like a man and things like that. And actually, it doesn't work like that. If you start lifting weights, if you start working out in your body, uh, you're just going to be with a little bit more muscle and maybe a little bit less back pain, for example, or less yeah. uh, shoulder pain. When you're sitting in the office, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable because your body is stronger. So I started sharing more because of that and talking more about that. Being being strong is beautiful uh, and all of us can be. Absolutely. And I think being strong is beautiful. It's actually one of the, I think, best quotes that I have listened to in a long while now. So, yeah, thank you so much for this. And, uh, you know. As I said, you know, at the start of this interview, that's going to be a very short and crisp interview. Uh, so to all my viewers, this interview is going to be basically centering on one of the most important things that is uh, like, you know, that's pretty much important for any athlete. And that's their, you know, food related habits, apart from the fitness time that they spend uh, in the gym or maybe in the ground. So, um, Roberta, my first question to you is, uh, you know, with respect to the food related things, what's your go to meal? Uh, my, my go-to meal. meal. Meal, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, so uh, my go-to meal, if I need like something on the go or easy, that is going to be my day-to-day -day meal is always going to be vegetables, very nice, rich omelette, and uh, some sort of potatoes and things like that. I love potatoes. Unbelievable. Uh, so for me, that's perfect because it is nutrition from the veggies, uh, protein from the from the omelette and the good carbs from the from the potatoes. So that is easy, that is quick, that is simple, and uh, that is something that most of my lunches or evening meals are. That's nice. Uh, what's your diet on match days and non match days? It, that's actually a good question because for me, it's all about feeling, feeling yeah. well. Uh, a, a, a body cannot cannot work well if it's not with good few yes um and i believe that concentration uh also is very related to tiredness and tiredness is related to whether you're eating well or not so in a match day uh a day that i do don't don't want to miss concentration i don't want to be on less than 100 percent i'm always gonna eat a lot and i'm gonna eat very well but make good choices so i'm gonna have a good breakfast if, if it is like a two o'clock game i'm gonna have a good breakfast i'm going to have a snack uh, if I cannot have lunch, I'm going to have a heavier snack. And always very food of carbs because I need the energy to play. Yeah. And very good of because I need the protein to protect my muscles. So it's very important to always eat very well on match days. Uh, and e even more important than before is the after. You yeah. have to make sure that the game finishes. As soon as your heavy practice finishes, you give your body food again. And it's tough because sometimes you win a good match or you're stressed because of a thing and you just forget about eating. Yeah. And that is not great because then your body starts eating your muscles instead of just 
consuming energy from the food. Uh, so after the game, always very, very good carbs, a lot of water. People do not talk enough about water, but yes. water is the cheapest supplement in the world. And without water, your body just starts getting injured and tired and fatigued. So a lot of water, a lot of good carbs, quick protein, and uh, make sure that you eat very well before you sleep again because your body, cricket, people may think that is easy game for old people, but you can be very tired on it. Yeah. So you specifically spoke uh, or mentioned about uh, the fact that you are a vegetarian. So was that something you uh, you basically chose you choose to be, or is it something that uh, you know you consulted a nutritionist and then you know your uh, doctor or a team nutritionist told you specifically that this is the kind of food that's going to suit your body or your stomach? So how did the process of you know let's say you know being a vegetarian uh, you know take place? Like was it more of a choice or something else? It was a life choice. Uh, okay. I'm a big animal protector. Nice. Um, and there was one moment in my life that for me, it was like, why am I now and I'm protecting a dog? Uh, for me, that didn't make sense. So I decided to stop having meat. Um, and that, that was purely based on life, but it improved my health a lot. I had uh, uh, blood, uh, uh, sorry, fat in my blood. I had uh, I lost weight very quickly. Uh, I started noticing that I didn't feel sleep after lunch anymore. Uh, I, I saw a lot of benefits from Stop Heavy Meat. But it was very interesting because in 2021, before the ICC qualifiers, I yeah. was pretty much in for three months. Uh, and uh, it was the best peak of performance that I ever had. Wow. So in terms of performance, uh, people talk a lot about being vegan and everything. And there's a lot of yes. professional apps going that route. It is actually good uh, it, it, your body does react differently uh, so i i would not disconsider becoming a vegan sometime of my life and uh when i want something to be very good uh if i can have all the vegan options i'll probably will yeah you know uh, speak about being a vegetarian so uh, you know when i'll take the example of virat kohli and harman preet kaur so they both are, you know, specifically vegetarian only. And the kind of diet that they usually have, you know, throughout the days, I think it's pretty simple because, you know, somehow I just sometimes feel that how, you know, how this kind of a diet can, you know, probably fuel them up or keep them energized for a long period of time. But then again, you know, that's what, you know, Virat had specifically and even Harman also in an interview with uh, ESPN Crick Info. She specifically, I think uh, both of them mentioned that I think it's basically about choosing, you know, what basically suits your body and at the very same time making those conscious choices. So yeah, I think initially I had also thought about this thing in my life that probably you know, if I am also playing something not at maybe uh, at the top level, but even if I'm playing something at the state level or uh, maybe normal uh, gully cricket or any sport, I think it's very important to have as much protein as I can. So whether it's any form of tofu or chicken or something like that, uh, it's necessary. But now with all the things that are coming up in the vegetarian food or maybe, you know, uh, the kind of uh, diet that a, probably a doctor or a nutritionist can make for you, I think that still can, uh, uh, ve vegetarian food, food can still uh, fuel you. What do you think about this? I think that you gave two perfect examples. Uh, yes. When you think about these years, they are strong, they are fit, yes. they are good. So we cannot say ever that Virat Kohli is not strong enough. He, that guy is a machine. Yes. Uh, so you, you, the, it works, but you have to be smart. But I think that's, that happens into everything in life. If you eat meat and you're not smart with the food, you're not going to be strong as well. Uh, but like the options you gave, like uh, for, for me, um, people always say that vegetarian, being a vegetarian, being a vegan is expensive. And yeah. for me, actually, it's just, cheapest uh, often because I eat rice, beans, vegetables, egg or tofu, and that's it, and fruits, yeah. and vegetables, fruits, and the grains, and fruits. It, it, it works easy. Uh, what, is, what is expensive is actually expecting things on the last minute. For example, if I'm out, um, if I'm out traveling or if I'm out going to a game, if I haven't prepped anything, 
if I go to a shop and have to buy something specifically vegan or vegetarian for myself, it's probably going to be a little bit harder to find and a little bit more expensive. But if, I, if I'm able to prep like I do, it's, yeah. it's actually very good, very easy to go for. Um, and there's also like, uh, I think, uh, oh my God, the sisters, Serene and Venus Williams, they are yeah. vegans as well. Yes. Look, yes. they are strong and they are fierce and they are good. So I guess it can fit into any athlete's lives. Um, and actually, I believe it brings much more benefits than a, 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 a diet that you can that you actually have meat. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, like how often do you include fruits in your diet? Too often. Uh, I have six uh, portions of fruit a day. Uh, I start on breakfast. I think pretty much every meal of mine have a fruit apart from lunch. Uh, but I will have two kinds of fruits in the morning, two kinds of fruits in the afternoon, and two kinds of fruits in the evening. And because I'm such, I love sweets, uh, I always go for the fruits that are like a little bit sweeter and yeah. um, that I can make recipes out of it. Um, and I, it, it actually doesn't, because we have so much variety, uh, I guess like in India, in India you have so many different fruits, isn't it? Yes. We have so much variety that you don't ever get tired of it. Um, so it's one of the things that I will never skip on my diet. I always gonna have a lot of fruit. That's nice. So uh, like, you know, in the Northern part of the country now, we are going to be, summers are almost approaching. And uh, the best fruit that, you know, we all probably, you know, most of the Indian, North Indians that like to uh, consume is mango. So do you like I... it? How often do you consume it? It's my favorite. I have every day. <laughs> nice. I have day and um, because it's again it's sweet it's easy it's nice uh i pre-cut it all i take into little containers of training i always carry with my backpack that has my computer my cricket things and a little a little bag for all the meals of the day uh, so i always carry two bags with me and uh, mango is always there and i love indian mangoes i've tried them before nice nice who brought it for you i lived in england and okay. uh, in the market, a lot of Indian fruits. So Indian mangoes are always there. Nice, nice. So uh, what's your preferred uh, pre-workout meal or a snack that you have? Uh, Pre-what? pre where? Pre pre what's your preferred pre-workout meal or a snack? Pre-workout. Like, you know, something that you consume just before a workout or a gym, gym session. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I always have uh, nuts, little nuts. Um, on it and the fruit because okay. my workout 10 o'clock in the morning. So we have breakfast around seven. Uh, so at nine, nine 30, I'll have a banana and nuts, for example. And, uh, after the, my workout, I will have my favorite meal of the day, which is, uh, I get an, I get a little container. I cut, I chop a banana off, put it in the microwave for a minute and becomes this cream. Mm -hmm. And I put that protein on it oh. and mix. Oh my God. So after training is the best moment of the day because it feels like I'm having a chocolate mousse. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's so delicious. You must try it. Uh, so pre-workout, I have just like good fat and uh, a fruit, uh, which is a chestnut, the, the nuts and a, a banana. And after training, I will have the protein and good carbs. So it's the best, best. You should try it. Surely I will. And uh, how big of a coffee person you are? <gasps> Too much. My nutritionist actually uh, forbid me to have more than three coffees a day now. Okay. Uh, I will have two coffees in the morning and one after lunch. Uh, but when I worked in offices and when I worked in the auditing and stuff, I would maybe have eight to ten coffees a day. No. Oh, so too much. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, and uh, out of those, you know, three coffees, so is it like completely all black or do you mix uh, some milk or something like that? All black, okay. no sugar. Uh, I drink a lot of tea, I think, because I stopped having coffee. Uh, tea is something that I like a lot. So I can have in the afternoons, uh, green teas, fruit teas, uh, because it doesn't have caffeine. So it, it, slow, it slows us down. Uh, but I... Uh, but then also tea with no milk, no sugar, no dessert. 
no gringo tea, no no English tea, uh, just normal herbal tea. <laughs> nice. So here's a question now, which might really, you know, make you crave for something or maybe, you know, make you hungry. So what's your favorite cheat meal? Chocolate. I love chocolate. I absolutely love chocolate. And uh, one thing that I, I like a lot is ice cream. Okay. So two things go to a new country. I always look for two things. First is good coffee. Yeah. I always like the coffee in the place that I go to. And yep. the second thing that I is ice cream. So for me, ice cream is delicious. So if I can have actually chocolate ice cream, is the perfect one. <laughs> Both of them together. Chocolate yeah. coffee, even better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's good. And how, uh, like, you know, with the with the athletes that, you know, I have also interviewed, not just at the international level in India, but at the domestic level too. Like most of them, they are they don't really have those cheat days. Like, you know, they just, they are going, you know, very... Uh, they're eating good food for the next, you know, for five or six days a week. And just one day it happens that, you know, they eat whatever they want to. It does not really happen with them like that. Now, for, with most of them, it's basically like, you know, they just consume maybe a couple of cheat meals per week. So what's the uh, like quantity for you also? Like, do you have a proper cheat day or is it just about uh, having a cheat meal every maybe three, four days or maybe every week? Yeah, I, I don't even call it cheat meal um, because I used to. Before, uh, maybe four years ago, I would be very strict and okay. have a cheat meal. Uh, now I try to listen to my body. Uh, so if I feel that I, I I want to have something different, I'll go and have it and make smart choices. Okay. One thing that is smart is I always have my food first. So what my body needs first and then the cheat uh, meal, uh, the, the ice cream, because I don't want I don't want to have my body deprived of the energy it needs. So if I need to have lunch, I will have lunch and then I'm gonna have the chocolate. Uh, of course, I'm gonna try to have good quantities that are not gonna disturb one another. But it works for me, it works better this way instead of waiting for the special moment to have, because then it's, it doesn't create this big pressure of the day and doesn't create the big pressure for me. Because if I'm feeling that I want something a little bit sweeter I will, I will go and have a little portion of it and that's all right yeah um for a long period of my life i tried to keep my body fat very low and i thought that was better for me but it actually helped gave me more injuries because my body was not strong enough okay. uh, now i try to keep my body fat on a better level uh which allows me to eat a little bit more with a little bit more freedom and also i noticed that it prevents much more injuries so and it so that helped a lot a lot allowing me to have the food that I want when I want but after I feel my body after my body's with nutrition that needs you can have your cheat day that's all right that's how I think probably the body adjusts also because the moment it starts getting the food that it needs after that I think you know any any kind of cheat meal or any kind of food that's probably that probably falls in the category of fast food or maybe junk food I think that's still pretty much okay. Uh, with the body to say maybe digest or take yeah i think so you first the first thing for us athletes is you have to feel your body first true give what it, give what it, it it must have and then you you can have balance in your life uh but in much in, mo in most of all you have balance with your mind like oh my god i cannot have something you're going to start thinking about whatever you can't have for a week <laughs> So uh, that is a very healthy relationship with your mind and your body. And uh, it stops creating so many things that are forbidden because yeah. actually they're not. So yeah. have some happy life as well, isn't it? Yeah, true. And uh, what's your favorite city to eat out? To eat out, to go yeah. out and eat. Yeah, yeah, to just go out and eat. Any favorite city uh, city that you have? Could be in Brazil or maybe outside of the country. A good question. I've been to Turkey uh, three years in a row. I worked in Turkey, and I remember this barbecue they made with vegetables. I I, I used to be a meat eater at the time with yeah. vegetables, and it was like this beautiful river, and uh, 
the, 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 the barbecue area was right next to the river and we were sitting with the foot in the water. It was beautiful and the food was delicious. Everything tasted so good, looked so good. If I could go back to one place again, I think I would go to that river sitting area with the barbecue on the side, vegetables, very great seasoning, Greek yogurt. It was yeah. so good. I think I would go back to a place like that. It, it was delicious. It was in Turkey, in a city called Bursa. Nice, nice. And apart from uh, the mangoes that you know uh, you have consumed with respect to the Indian food, uh, what all other Indian food uh, like have you tried? Or like have you tried something else apart from mangoes? I I actually because I lived in England, I used to go to a lot of Indian restaurants. Yeah. When I started going, I had to ask everything without any spice because I I I didn't know how to eat them. Yeah. Uh, now myself a mild spice person and uh, Indian food is for me so good because it has a lot of vegetarian options yes it's very healthy uh, it has a lot of uh, condiments that taste so good so I actually I'm gonna share some news with you yeah yeah when, when are you sharing this pod uh, I'll be sharing this pod in max in a day or two okay so I can share this news with you yeah I'll be going to Oh, uh, for nice. the semi WPL. Nice, nice, nice. So I can't wait to eat Indian food in India. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. So, well, well uh, now is my question to you. What do I what what do I must eat when I'm over there? I think uh see now that you know you're a vegetarian and I think you'll be in Mumbai only for the semifinals, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. I think the best thing would be for you to consume uh, the local Mumbai food, which is the names that obviously, you know, I'll text you also, which is a vada pav. It's kind of a snack, which is, uh, say, maybe in grilled between two, which is basically, you know, stuffed between two breads or two buns. And then, you know, you have a lot of uh, the local food that they have there. It's kind of a misal pav, kusal pav. It does include a lot of buns. And uh, in the healthier options, I would suggest you to, uh, you know, go for something like a besan ka chila. That's basically made of uh, flour and something like that. Because that's, you know, uh, it's a it's a proper combination of, uh, uh, you know, protein plus good fats also. Like, you know, in most of the besan ka chila, they uh, infuse some kind of paneer also. So that they, or paneer or maybe tofu, you know, as we say it. So uh, I think, yeah, that's going to be good food. Besan ka chila. Yeah, and it's good. It is basically, it's basically a kind of a go-to meal for a lot of vegetarians in North India, specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, text you. I'll text you a, a few names, then you can try them accordingly. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so just the last couple of uh, questions. Uh, like, you know, is apart from, uh, you know, the meat that you have stopped consuming, is there something else that you have removed from your diet also, just as a part of your fitness plan? Uh, no, I pretty much eat everything uh, apart from the meat. I try to reduce a lot of fried foods, but not not because of the diet only, but because I, I don't think I don't I don't really like it that much. I don't like the taste of the truth, something that is deep fried, for example. Uh, but I, I pretty much eat everything else. Uh, I, I'm easy on those terms. I thought about reducing gluten for a little bit of my life when I was feeling that I was having too much inflammation. Yeah. But I never, I just made, made sometimes choices of going without it. Um, I do not like to drink milk. Yeah. Milk is something for me to work. Uh, but if there, if there is a recipe that has milk, I'm not going to not eat it. Yeah. I think, yeah, that was... Uh... You know, some great answers that uh, you gave, you know, with respect to all the, you know, important things that an athlete must take care of, whether he's a, whether he or she is a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. Just, you know, one question that I have for you, and this is uh, with respect to the interview that you gave to BBC regarding the mental health. And, uh, you know, one of the questions that, one of the quotes that really hit me was that you still had to keep going because the team needed you. And even in that situation, you weren't in the best of your spirits. See, this is something that I feel that does not uh, really happen in sports. 
it happens to you know all of us like you know for someone who is in charge of a particular house who is taking care of their family members or anyone or even the society also at some point or some time it does happen that obviously we understand that the other person or the other or the society needs us but we still uh, and you but we aren't in the best of our shapes but we still have to keep going not just for us but for them but there has to be a line that we have to draw okay you know probably you know this is the time that you know i'll just have to stop doing something because i need to take care of myself first i need to take care of my mental health first how do you really draw that line because sometimes it gets really really tough to you know do something for someone and sometimes it is very difficult to back out also or let's say or rather i should say it's not not back out but sometimes it's very difficult to take a step back because you know it you have to take it for yourself but somehow you are not able to take it so like how do you draw that line how do you basically tell yourself okay enough is enough i have to take a step back that's such a good question and i hope i can help somehow please, because i yeah. have been talking about it yeah yeah please um, not 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 a lot about podcasts, but a lot about uh, in therapy as well. When with my friends, because uh, what happened to me last year is that I did not put a line uh, for everything that was happening in my life, personal life, athlete's life, work life. Um, I was doing everything, and I was feeling drained, and I was feeling bad, and I was not being able to cope with it. I was mentally in a very dark place and I, I was like, I can't, I, I can't stop. I have to carry on. I, and I did not draw a line until I was very, very, very bad. Uh, what I have been talking a lot about now in therapy and with my friends and with my boss is, okay, I'm not happy. Uh, something's not right. Not, not happy mentally, but I'm not happy with a situation. Uh, I, I, I I have to start putting the line over there and say, you know what? I need a few days. Yeah. I need the time. I need a little break. And I'm very bad at this because I have very, very bad trouble saying no. I have very bad. Uh, I, I, I'm always in trouble to say that I can do something or I can do another. Uh, and I have very a, a big difficulty of drawing this line. But one of my, the mental coach for Cricket Brazil said something that I think was very good. We are like phone batteries. Yeah. Uh, so we start losing a little bit of energy. We charge it up, we come back. We lose a little bit of energy, we charge it up, we go back. But if you die your phone completely, it's going to take much longer. You're going to first have to turn your whole phone down or yeah. off. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take longer to charge. So what we have to remember is, before you get to the low battery stage, you have to charge up and you cannot let the battery down because it's going to be a much harder work to get it working again. True. So, and the steps that we are taking to charge this battery is like taking a little time to myself, doing things that I enjoy. And for me, it was so difficult that I didn't know what I enjoyed. So when they were like, okay, what do you like doing? I'm like, play cricket. I said, no, nah, what do you like doing outside okay. your workplace? I don't know. So for people that are sometimes are too deep in their in their roles and uh, they go too far, usually they don't know what is good for them. So you have to reestablish all of that. Um, so establish what you like, establish what makes you feel good, establish what makes you relax and give little doses of it between every charge that you have to do to your, to your mind, to your body. I think that is what is we, I'm in the first steps of it. Since I started back in training, I'm in these first steps. Uh, and it's not easy. I, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable because I'm always on 400 kilometers per hour. Mm. So when the, they said, okay, stop it and have some time for yourself, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to how to switch off. But for me, it's as simple as like on Sunday mornings is my, is my day, is my time. So me and my husband, we go out for breakfast in a place that I love. And we have like a cheese bread, toast, coffee, a nice cake. We sit outside in the sun. We talk about whatever comes to mind. We give a little walk and we come back. And that sometimes as simple as that. And sometimes it's going to be like, okay, I'm going to travel by myself or I'm going to go for a retreat or I'm just going to sit and watch my favorite series. 
whatever it is, but you must be doing things that are good for you often and not only on special occasions or not only when you're fully drained. I think that's maybe the best answer that I can give at this moment from my side. Nice. One last question, but I promise to all my viewers that, you know, I'll make sure that uh, I, you know, have one more session with Roberta regarding, you know, all the things that, you know, she has been through in her personal life uh, with respect to the professional life. But before we, I think, uh, you know, wrap up one question that I have for you, when you decided, or let's say, you know, when you were in the phase that you knew that you wanted that time off for yourself, when you wanted that well, let's say, you know, break for yourself or something like that. You needed that rejuvenation period. Was there any kind of fear of being misunderstood by people around you? Okay, you know, what if I take this decision? What will this XYZ person think about me? Or, you know, what will they think about me? Did you have that fear of being misunderstood? Oh, 100%. I still do. I still, uh, I still sometimes fear that people would see me as a weak person because of that. Okay. Um, what helped me a lot is to see so many players talking about it. Yeah. So I had Meg Lenny, we had Nat Siever a little bit earlier say, taking t time off. And I was like, wow, if these girls, they're so strong, so powerful, with so much support, can go through that, I, I can as well. Um, but it, there was a fear of being misunderstood. And maybe that's why I started talking more about it. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I have to talk about it. So they understand what it ha what I was going through. Because yeah. I knew the time off before I went to the tournament. And I had to sit, I sat with my therapist and said, show, I, show can I go? If I go, can I cope with it? If I don't go, can I cope off with not going? So we actually weighed what was best yeah. on that. Day. And I, I felt that it was better for me to go because I wouldn't be able to sit at home and let my team play. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was a difficult because sometimes people will, would see that as weakness, and I see that as a strength. Uh, so for me, my one of the things in life is like to show that, show people that it's strong to speak, yeah. uh, it's okay to speak, it's not weak to speak, um, and uh, I think that has been very good because the conversations that I have with other people are actually very very meaningful. Yeah. And uh, I doing more good. And now, if people do not understand it, unfortunately, I can't control it. Um, and uh, I think each person has their own paths. So I have to respect everyone's. Nice, nice. I think, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, it was, you know, once again, you know, uh, it was uh, wonderful chatting with you. You, I think your answers are not just exhaustive. I think they are pretty much meaningful also. And they are uh, somehow, you know, they leave a message for all those, you know, who are listening that uh, yeah it's when you're going through a phase like this it's very important to talk it's very important to come out and speak so yeah thank you so much and uh, thank you for joining and it was great to have you again very interesting to talk to you i love this time that we have uh, i would come back anytime you want and thank you very much for your space thank you